first of all, there's three ways you can profit from running business networking parties. And some of them might be a bit obvious, but it's worthwhile thinking about it because the quickest way you can make money is just through the ticket sales itself. Um, if you are running an event like for example, one of the events that I that I ran, I did actually have to meet a quota of the number of people that uh, came into my event in order to get the space at the venue. They provided the food, provided I met my own KPIs. It's funny, you can be self-employed and still have KPIs thrust upon you. Anyway, I didn't complain. They would supply the food if I filled up the room. Um, typically, it was around about 30 plus people, and they also had to spend a certain amount at the bar. Different case to do that these to, these days, because a lot of people are toning down what they're actually drinking. So what might have been the case 10 years ago, I can tell you, yes, the environment has changed quite drastically, uh, maybe p since post-lockdown, that's when it's changed a fair bit. Okay, the next thing is selling your product or service. That is probably an obvious one. Um, as you mentioned before there, Don, yes, you can sell your product or service. If you're a financial planning company and you want to run a, uh, a business uh, networking evening, it's probably inevitable you're going to come across a few people that want to say, by the way, what do you do during the week? And you can tell them. I once used to do some web design work about 15 plus years ago. And people would say, what do you do during the week? So I used to tell them, I do this, and that way I would get one or two customers out. But I wasn't really even selling at the at the process of, of my event. People would merely come up to me and ask me about what I did. So I wasn't even really using it as a sales pitch. And of course, the other way is to create future high-level connections. You never know who is in the room. Um, as I always say, Providence can deliver to you the most unusual contacts either personally or professionally. I'll say that again. Providence can deliver to you contacts that will either be, you know, completely out of the blue that you don't know. I think it's a case of, it's like this. Uh, if you're of a certain type of uh, belief, feelings, you know, or an attitude, you're likely to attract more people that reflect your beliefs, feelings, and attitudes, and so forth, uh, along similar lines. Those people are keenly serious. They will be the ones who show up, like you are all here today, obviously. Okay, different types of parties out there. Uh, I will cover today that there is a lot more than just simply business networking mixer events, but that seems to be the popular terminology or wording that we're using today. There's also singles mixer events. Before I started calling my my social group, a social group, up until the year 2010, I used to call all of my events singles events, but outside of that of my business events, which were under a completely different banner. Anyway, what that was, was the singles area is probably the, one of the most untapped areas of potential. And if you run singles events, you don't necessarily have to call them singles events, uh, but you could simply call them a type of social event and that opens the door for a lot of people to come along. And if you really pay attention to making sure those people get introduced around, because probably the biggest reasons why a lot of people don't come to events is they're often afraid that they'll be alone and on their own. So you do actually have to make sure you've got some mingler type people there at your events. That's extremely vital. If you can't do the mingling yourself, have some friends that are devoted to doing it and let them in for free. Elite hosted events. Um, this means what it says. With elite hosted events, essentially, um, you can have higher class type versions of both business events or singles events or some other type of thing. And you're charging a higher price tag for that event, which might be, say, $97 or even $197 for the ticket price for that event. So uh, I think, Don, it, being in your country, that would be, say, a 100-pound event or a 50-pound event, something like that, if I can say that right. Uh, something where you're charging a lot higher price, but those people who come along want to be in their own type of set. And 
some venues it's worthwhile charging that type of price because just to even hire the room they won't give you a free room or free food or whatever like like what i got at uh, one of the five star venues that i was utilizing uh, they will actually want to charge for that so you've got to be prepared to likewise charge for it you can't line up stuff like this two weeks into the future and just expect people to show up you've got to be planning these events out two to three months minimum into the future for your very first one. Uh, product launches, that should be obvious, but believe it or not, once you get good at doing something like this, people will ask you, by the way, David, um, I loved your event there. Can you help me do this for my business or can I launch this? There's always opportunities for you to use your events or use your event skills for other people. 